Hey guys, this is Nathan, and welcome back to Vintage Story. Hope you guys are doing good today. I am doing great. So I am still down through the new translocator. Just been doing some exploring, and I found this weird-looking tree on the map. And guess what? It's one of our unused, or well, one of our woods that we don't have yet. Ebony. So, yes, I get to go ahead. I've got a little bit of inventory space still. So, something to think about there. Someone in one of my live streams here the other day was asking if it was even worth cutting the drifters anymore. Well, you can see I've got three, yes, three temporal gears in my inventory and the fourth one is in the chest on my back so yeah just in a little bit of time of exploring i have gotten four temporal gears so yeah i would say that it is worth it so we do have some bones so we can go ahead and use that for our knives and yeah i am going to uh harvest this ebony for a while I'm gonna try to knock down the whole tree and uh, yeah it is a big tree I will say that so I will see you guys in a little bit well this is not exactly the place that I want to be when a heavy temporal storm is approaching but I'm pretty sure we can probably weather it you know, we may have to go up on kind of a nerd pole to do it, but I guess that's kind of the way that it goes sometimes. So, yeah, as you can see, my little axe that I was using to speed this along just broke. And, yeah, by the way, we have hyenas around here as well. So, that's loads of fun. So I managed to survive the temporal storm thanks to some hyenas giving me something to eat. But, uh, yeah, I decided it was probably time to get back to the base. Now we did get an awful lot of the ebony wood. I was able to almost completely empty... Well, actually I got the entire tree, so... And I got two seeds from it as well. But I got back and I see now we have this cassava soaked now. And it says, now peel this with a knife to make it edible. So let's go ahead and try this. So I've got just a granite knife here. I'm not sure how this needs to go in here. Okay, so the knife needs to be on top. And we get this. And it does say that it's dryable. I don't know what that means. But we have this there now if we put it in here what does it need to do to duration infinity days what okay that is weird i have seen nan not a number but never infinity now we do have an awful lot of leather as well and so that's pretty good but the wind is blowing really good right now so I figured this is a good time to go ahead and get going on our blooms that we have here so yeah these first four I actually manually removed all of the slag from them when the Thing was moving really really slow so they will go pretty quick the other 64 probably will not but right now I don't think I'm needing any tools even though I have well maybe I could use a couple of pickaxes and some shovels and even a regular axe yeah I think I probably will forge up a few tools here too while I'm at it so I guess I will see you guys after I've got some of this taken care of. Well, we are starting to get some ripe berries. So I think it might be time for us to try making a little bit of pie. 
just so that we can see what this does and how it works and everything like that. So let me get these out of the way. So I'm going to gather up all of the ripe berries here. I'm sure that some are going to ripen while I'm here because also I am going to harvest the last little bit of stuff out of the other paddock over here where we found all the bunnies. So yeah, that's going to give me a lot of food to carry back to the base. Like I said, there's going to be tons of, oh, there's one. There's going to be tons of berries ripening here very shortly. We've got 36 already in our inventory. But yeah, there's going to be a lot of stuff here to harvest as well. Because we've got pretty much everything is ripe except for a couple of soybeans that I found broken in this onion. And then the cassava. So I'm going to harvest everything else here. I suppose I'll go grab my scythe for that because that would speed things along. Do have plenty of room in my inventory. So, yep, I will get this all harvested. So we now have more than a stack of berries as well as a whole lot of other stuff. So let's go ahead and get these in there. And I am going to pull this salt out of here. And we are going to put some of this grain in its place. And maybe the, well, here, let's move this. We have some grain over there. So let's put the vegetables over here. And then the salt, I think we're gonna put up here. I have this cassava, I cannot figure out what I'm supposed to be doing to dry it. I have no clue, but it does say that it's dryable. So I don't know how to do that, but whatever. But what we're going to do we're going to try to get all of this grain together, and my gosh, there is a lot of grain there. Okay, so that's rye. We actually didn't have any rye planted? That is surprising. But we did get quite a bit of the sunflower grain, which I think is pretty cool. I haven't messed with that at all. So maybe we can actually do something with sunflowers for bread or something like that. And I think we are going to use some of this rice for uh, making the flour or, eh, you know what, we're going to use spelt instead. We have quite a bit of spelt here. So let's go ahead and take the spelt. And we are going to go up here to the top. And unfortunately you can see the mill is turning really, really slow right now. So I am going to have to grind this by hand. So I guess I'll just place this down somewhere. And um, yeah, time to grind some, some flour. All right, so I think we are ready to give this a shot. So we have 64 flour in our inventory. Let's go ahead and combine that with some water and that is going to make dough. Now I believe this is the way that we do this. Okay, so we've got our dough. Now I think what we need to do is place this on a table. How does this work? Can we not use spelt? That's the, the next thing. Oh, nice, we can put uh, more than one at a time in there. Well, how do we make the other? Okay, so grab some peat. I don't know if that's what we can use in here or not. Oven is full. Temperature cold. Do we have to have fire underneath it? I don't know. So how do we go about doing this? Doesn't look like we can do that. Um... Is there something that I am missing? There must be something that I'm missing because I also can't do the pie. So I don't know. Let me do just a quick little bit of research and find out what I am supposed to do with this. Okay, so that actually sounds like a neat way to do things. You actually have to put your 
wood into the fire or into the oven first like that and that will heat up the oven so let's go ahead and heat up both of these ovens once the fire has burnt out that's when you can put your stuff in to bake now in the meantime it does say that we're supposed to be able to shift click this down but it doesn't look like we can use spelt for the pie crust maybe no we should be able to use spelt so we are supposed to holding at least two dough in your hot bar which i am holding 10 sneak place it onto the table to your, do we have to actually use a table let's go grab a table and just see if that makes any difference i should have yeah i've got an aged wooden table here and if this doesn't work then i don't know what i'm supposed to do so we'll just place this here oh, okay it does have to actually be on a table so then we are supposed to add our fruit to this there we go and now these are burnt out so we can place the pie in there okay so we're gonna have to watch that really closely so let's go ahead and get two pies baking and so I don't know how we know when this is done that's a good question because from what I understand, you can burn stuff in the clay oven. And I do not want to do that. So let's just, oh, it's changing color. It's turning brown. Oh, it, okay, so it says it's part baked right now. Let's go ahead and make a couple more pies. Um, oh, there we go. It is definitely done. So now this part baked pie, or this pie, what can we do with that? Okay, so they even stack. So, oh, nice. So it is fresh for 10.6 days here. Can we place these on? No, they can't go on there, but bread can, of all things. The ovens are still warm enough, I think, to cook these. So let's hope that they are. But that is really cool. So now the question becomes, how do we eat this? So we are very hungry right now. Do we just click on it here? No. Do we have to... Oh, nice. You have to use a knife to cut it up. Oh, that is really cool. Okay, so we can place that back down. Can we place? Nope, we can't place that on a shelf. But, oh, that is cool. So it doesn't do a whole lot for the satiety, satiety but that is really cool oh and we don't eat the whole thing nice okay so we've got a couple more pies here that is really cool i like that a lot so let's go ahead and throw a little bit of bread in here too while we're at it why not we'll see if we can cook just a little bit of bread but that is really cool pies now I am very curious to know if we can make uh, different pies with multiple types of fruit or if we have to use just one fruit. Obviously we have a difference of crust type, but that is just, it's not much of anything. But yeah, that is really cool. That is a very neat mechanic. I like that a lot. So, yeah, we'll see. Okay, so we're part break baked on our bread here now. So we'll let this get fully baked, and then we will go on from there. Well, let's just see here. So that is 150. 
Oh, and I can't put it back in once I pull it out. No, I have to put it in the other, the other oven. Okay, so... Yeah, and that's 300 when it's fully cooked. So we definitely want to cook it fully before we pull it out of the oven. So that is really cool. All right, well, I had no idea that was a thing, but that is really, really neat. All right, well, I will be back in a little bit. So I really want to try something here. I want to see if we can make a meat pie. Now, in order to do that, I'm going to have to get some red meat, which means I got to head out here and try to do some hunting. Now, I don't want to kill the livestock that I have right around the base, and I also don't want to kill the livestock on the other side of the translocator. So we're going to head out here. I know there are a bunch of sheep out here in this direction. And there's a pig. So that will work. We'll just go ahead and... Oh, come on. I just want to kill you a little bit. There we go. All right. So it does say that it's a decent weight. So that's good. So yeah, we even got some fat out of that. So I don't know if we're going to need more than that. So let's see if we can get another animal here somewhere. And I will meet you guys back at the base. All right, so the ovens are reheating. So let's go ahead and try this out here. So can we put some meat in here? Yes, we can. Okay, so then the question becomes, can we put something else? Can't mix fillings from different food categories okay so we have to make a meat pie oh we can put more on top that is neat okay so question can I do that with the fruit pie yes I can neat so you can leave an open topped pie or you can have an unopen topped pie. That is really cool. All right, well, let's go ahead and keep going here. So then the question becomes if we can't mix between food or uh, so can I put in some turnips and then some onions to finish off? I can. Neat. Okay, so it does say that is a raw pie. Now the question becomes, okay, so that's 480 grain and 1200 vegetable. Okay, so it does add more grain. So yes, capping your pies is probably a good idea. All right, well, we have a meat pie, a red meat pie. And uh, that is done, right? Yeah, it just says it's a red meat pie. Okay, well, we have nowhere to place this. Darn it. Well, let's go ahead and throw in our vegetable pie. And we have our cranberry pie now. Oh, geez, we're going to have pies everywhere. <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong with that. So, my gosh, that is ridiculous how much stuff we have in that pie. So... Yeah, these are good for a long time. That is nice. But we have no ability to go beyond that. But also you can see the bread here. So we have 11 days on the bread. That's pretty cool. We have enough left here. Wait a second. How much meat does it take to fill one of these? I thought it took eight. Um, I don't know. Well, we have plenty of other types of pie, so let's go ahead and make ourselves a vegetable pie. So, yeah, we've got to have somewhere that we can set these out, because they won't go on shelves. So, I guess we could potentially put them in chests. So, it does say that this is food... Food will perish. Okay. Um, let's see in here. 
15 days. Nice. Okay, so let's try in the chest. 15 days. Okay, so it's the same regardless, but that is pretty cool. So if we place these... Now these stacked. So yeah, that is great. Ooh, did I overcook that? Yep, it is charred. And that's what we've got to be careful of. We need to make sure that we don't char our pie. We need to watch it and make sure that it gets to the proper state. So we have just a red meat pie and a charred red meat, a vegetable, a cranberry, and then a whole bunch more cranberry that's not as good, and then an onion. Oh man, that is... That is really cool. I like this mechanic. I am going to be making so many pies now. All right. Well, I will see you guys in a little bit. So I have charred a couple of pies and it does give them a longer spoil timer, but it also makes it to where they don't have as much food to them. So yeah, we have lots of pies here. They're going to be good for a couple of weeks. This uh, first one that we made is actually the worst of all of them at the moment. Now, I do have some of these up here. So I did find out we can use pickled turnips, but you can see 192 and 128 in the chard versus 192 and 672 on the red meat. Of course, red meat is a lot better than turnips anyway, but you know, 80 versus however much that would give. So, yeah, we do want to basically make our stuff fresh. We don't want to be pickling if we can help it. And that's going to come in really handy with the remote farm. But I do have two pieces of red meat left here. And um, I think I'm just going to throw some onions in there with it. We don't have a huge amount of the pickled turnips left anymore. I also found out that we cannot put peanuts in. I figured as much, but we can put cabbage in, and cabbage is actually better than red meat when it comes to actually uh, making a high-end meal. So, yes, cabbage. We are going to be trying to push for the cabbage very heavily, but with everything that I have been doing here, I am realizing we desperately need that mill down by the remote farm. So I think I am going to try to get something set up there that I can actually make that farm and uh, farm mill and uh, see what we have when I get back. So I was going to be building our new mill out at the farms next, but uh, the Sunday live stream caught me before I was able to finish it. And the thing is, is we did a lot of stuff during this Sunday live stream. So if you are not following me over on my second channel, link is down in the description. It will probably be a few days before that video goes out. Because, yeah, I'm, I'm a little bit behind on my live stream uploads. But we live streamed for eight hours and got tons of stuff done. And not the least of which is that ruin that we had been in from the very beginning is gone. All of our storage is gone. The only thing that is still left here is the windmill with all of our smithing stuff. And our food storage down here. These are literally the only things left here. So, yes, that is all now up in the second floor of our house. And this is, of course, just a temporary thing. But we got this all put in here and reasonably well organized. So, obviously, there will be a lot more organization going forward and a lot of this stuff will not be in a central location. I would kind of like to keep some of it decentralized, store it in places that make sense for it to be. Like for instance, I believe this one here is all pottery items. 
Now, obviously, like the molds, those are going to be in our blacksmith area. But things like planters and flower pots, those I have a different place in mind. And that's actually going to be a florist shop. And so that is also going to be a place that we will find, not that, but things like this. The, the flowers and things like that, we'll have those in a floral shop. And then other pottery items like the storage vessels and cooking pots and bowls and things like that, those will all be in a pottery shop. So yes, there's going to be a lot of stuff going on with that. Now the other thing is, is we made all the way up to an iron upgraded crate here to hold our andesite stones because yeah we we couldn't even fit it all in a bronze one and then the bronze here for the granite because we were way overloading on that and then copper for the oak logs because yeah we, we've just been getting tons and tons of stuff now i did have to do a whole bunch of mining of basalt and that got me a whole bunch more copper so yes we've been getting lots and lots of stuff our ores well this is not ores but this is our standard ores this is all of our copper and then this is all of our iron related stuff so lots of stuff there we moved all of the tool racks up here and then we have all of our more prized possessions like a chest and a half of temporal gears and lots of lore I think we're going to start out the next episode by reading some lore because, yeah, I've been getting this stuff from panning in the bony soil and I think it's about time we go through some of it. We got lots and lots of stuff here. Of course, this is all of our aged wooden planks and I have not been taking all of those. And then we have a whole bunch of other stuff there. So, yes, lots of things. Now, one thing I did want to kind of discuss this. So we did have the suggestion on the second floor, or the well, the attic space of the building over here to go through the wall. So actually that is going to be what we're going to do, but I think we're going to go like right in here and just have a small staircase leading up into it because that to me seems like the best way to do this so we'll probably have a little storage area in here for our our actual house but for the time being that's not going to be now thankfully the sun is coming up so we'll be able to look at some of the other stuff that we did during the live stream and one of them is pathwork that was the majority of the stream was path work and dirt work. So we have now this bauxite stone path bordered with basalt cobble on each side. And this will run around the base here, well, all over in the city. But as we get to the edge of the city, we transition to the granite path that goes all over the world. And this is just amazing. We have little bits of sandstone path and claystone, and it just is slowly feathered from the, or from the uh, granite to the bauxite. And I think that's great. Also, I slightly widened out this area, and it slowly tapers down to the two wide path that we had originally, and then it widens out as it gets close to the town. And then again on this side, so I pulled up the path over here and then ran the path this direction and it slowly tapers back down again over here. Now this area, there's a huge amount of change here. I wish I had a before because the before and after would be absolutely amazing. So we did tons of filling and terrain shaping here to try to make this make a bit more sense. So this little hill here was an addition and it really helps out a lot. It gives something for the path to go around and makes logical sense with what's going on. I also upped the size of this little area here and filled in a large amount of space in between a lot of these things. 
Now, this little space down here, I haven't quite decided what I'm going to do with that yet, but there's a lot of dirt work has been done around here, and we are slowly getting this path run just right over to our translocator. Also did a lot of filling of ponds, and I have to say, this one here, you would not know that I changed it if you hadn't been in the live stream. So this was originally all water right here. If we dig underneath this, there is still muddy gravel down there. So this was a huge amount of space that got filled in. This was a very large pond that ran all the way up like into here. So yeah, that was a very large pond. Same with this one here. We filled in all of this space down through here and we removed a huge amount of the basalt sand that was here, replacing it with dirt so that the terrain made more sense. So yes, there's a lot of stuff that we did during the live stream. We also discussed a few potential ideas of what we're going to be doing in the future. So I, I really enjoyed a lot of that. But I will say this farm is going away. We are going to be tearing down this guy and moving it. And there's a whole bunch of other stuff that we still have to do. And I guess the last thing I should mention this, we got all of our livestock into these two holes in the ground. We've got pigs over here. We've got sheep over here. The sheep are, we, well, we have four pregnant sheep and five pregnant pigs. So we should have plenty of animals going forward. So yeah, lots done. And in the next episode, hopefully we can do a bit of the lore reading and get the building done on our new mill because we are out of time for this one. So I'm going to say thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the episode, be sure to give a thumbs up. If you are new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. If you have any thoughts about what I've been working on or anything that you want to see, be sure to leave that down in the comments and I will see you next time. Bye.